Ben Hill Griffin Stadium at Florida Field in Gainesville. Sports Channel presents Florida High School Football Championships. Today it's the 4A title game between Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas, and Tallahassee Leon. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Vitell along with Jim Yarborough. Welcome to our continuing coverage of the Florida High School Football Championships. We're up to the 4A title game. And Jim, we have two of the traditional powers in Florida High School Football, St. Thomas Aquinas and Tallahassee Leon. And the Raiders out of Fort Lauderdale are led by uh, head coach George Smith, one of the winningest coaches in the history of high school football in the state of Florida. And of course, that great tradition at Leon, Gene Cox was there for a number of years. And now it's Jim Sauls leading that program, Larry. So we expect a great championship battle here this afternoon. For St. Thomas Aquinas, they are undefeated, ranked number one in the state. They're a power-oriented football team. They certainly are. They like to keep that football on the ground with a power eye. They feature a couple of outstanding running backs, Keith Wilkerson and Daryl Porter. So look for those guys to carry the ball. On defense, a young kid named Terry Smith has gotten our attention, so he should be outstanding on their defensive unit. Terry Smith, you'll love watching him play. He's about 5'8", maybe 170 pounds, but George Smith says he's the best true football football player he's had in 21 years of coaching. That says an awful lot. Now for Tallahassee, Leon, a very different kind of football team and one that poses some unique problems for Aquinas. Multi-dimensional on offense. Uh, Justin Whitfield is the quarterback and he's the straw that stirs the drink of that offensive unit. And I don't think the Raiders have seen an offense like uh, Leon possesses. The Lions uh, can pass the football, they can run the football, and uh, they've come from behind in their last five ball games, Larry, to get to this championship event. So we've got a great matchup for the 4A title game for St. Thomas Aquinas, a little extra something. They're here the second straight year. Last year they lost the championship game, but they're back in Gainesville. And Art Schifrin tells us this return trip is a good omen in 1992. There you see St. Thomas Aquinas making its second consecutive trip to the Florida State Football Championships. They are the third team to re return to Gainesville this year. Two of them have already won. In the 1A game, Jacksonville University Christian has gone on for a second consecutive win. And then Frostproof has avenged a loss in last year's 2A game to Monticello Jefferson County. They beat Newberry this year. Now St. Thomas Aquinas will try to duplicate that feat. They lost last year in the 4A game to Fort Walton Beach. Can they duplicate it with a win today over Tallahassee Leon? We'll see in just a minute when we return with the opening kickoff on Sports Channel. Florida Field, where we're just about to get underway with the Florida Class 4A High School Football Championship. They're ready to toss the coin. Aquinas apparently won the toss. And, and they're going to defer. So Leon will undoubtedly accept the football. And the Lions of Tallahassee, Leon, will go on offense for the first time. Michael Holmes, a senior right guard for Leon there. Their captain, Terry Smith, a linebacker for St. Thomas Aquinas. We'll enjoy watching Terry Smith play this afternoon. Good luck, guys. Leon will receive and defend the south end zone here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. The officiating crew is from the Fort Myers area. Richard Piggott is the referee, and there you see the rest of the crew that will be working this Florida Class 4A state championship matchup. St. Thomas Aquinas was here last year, and they were routed by Fort Walton Beach by a score of 39-14. to 14. A tremendous performance in that game by... Fort Walton Beach and their quarterback, Danny Werfel. Werfel now a freshman at the University of Florida. Great day for football, although you would think it's October and not mid-December. 76 degrees, partly cloudy skies, just a slight breeze. And if it's getting up to six miles an hour, I'd like to know where. It's more like about six-tenths of a mile an hour. You can barely feel it. St. Thomas Aquinas with the gold trousers, white jerseys, and gold helmets as they take to the field here at Florida Field. Aquinas undefeated, number one in the state, a perfect regular season, and then a couple of tough playoff games with Hollywood Hills and Deerfield Beach. And then in the sectional, a very impressive win over a talented Fort Myers team by a score of 28-0. Yeah, you talked about these officials uh, being headquartered in Fort Myers, and uh, what a great program that the Green Wave has had for the last couple of years, but they've not been able to beat the Raiders out of Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas. Fort Myers having no success in two consecutive years against uh, these Raiders. 
The Raiders head coach George Smith in his 18th year at Fort Lauderdale St. Thomas Aquinas. They are back in the state championship game for the second straight year. And beforehand, I asked him if that was an advantage for his team today. Last year, maybe we were a little bit in awe of the stadium, that type of thing. And, and uh, maybe we didn't, as coaches, treat the game properly, didn't prepare our team properly, which I would almost think that was the case last year. And I think that, you know, we're supposed to be the smart guys. And I think we learned some things from that that, that we passed down on the team. So there, there is some difference. I, I, I think we're a little bit more... Uh, I think we're looser than we were last year, and uh, of course you don't know if that's going to work. We'll see at uh, 5.30. But, uh... George Smith has his team in the state playoffs. This is the 11th playoff appearance for St. Thomas Aquinas and the 10th in the last 13 years. Tallahassee Leon, the Lions, the winningest high school program in the state of Florida with 496 wins. They were 8-2 in the regular season, suffering losses to Jacksonville Bowles and Live Oak Suwannee County. But in the playoffs, a tremendous win over Milton. They trailed by uh, about 18 in that game, came back to win it, trailed Ocala Forest, won by 10, and trailed Daytona Seabreeze by 10 points in the second half and came back to win that one as well. And the reason, uh, one of the primary reasons, Justin Whitfield, the talented quarterback, can pass the ball very well as well as run when he has to. He, uh, he's a very dangerous threat coming out of the backfield from the quarterback position. There's head coach Jim Sauls at Tallahassee Leon. Last year, Leon had one of Florida's truly great high school seniors and a youngster by the name of Tamaric Vanover, who starred as a freshman. In fact, has already been chosen by several entities as the National Freshman of the Year. Yeah, a lot of talented uh, athletes playing high school football in the state of Florida. And this afternoon, we have the 4A division battle. And there you see a lion. That's a pretty good looking lion. Yeah. The Raiders will kick off to the lion. St. Thomas Aquinas, the runner up last year. They've lost only once in the last two years. The kickoff by Bader. Sylvester Jones on the return. Not much running room, and he gets to about the 22-yard line, and that's where Leon will start on offense. Sean Sands made the tackle for Aquinas. The offensive line for Leon. They'll run behind Carpata as much as they can. Mario Miller, an excellent two-way player, really a star on the defensive side of the ball for the Leon Lions. The receiving core, Frank Pondexter, will make a lot of big plays for Tallahassee Leon, but Maurice Thomas is their top receiver, and the quarterback, Justin Whe uh, Whitfield, and his tailback, Sylvester Jones, a very good tandem in the backfield as they start from the shotgun. Whitfield can't find a receiver. Now he does, and he gets that pass complete. I believe that is to Pondexter, the six foot, 195-pound junior. Sean Sands, the free safety on the tackle. The Raiders playing uh, a two-deep zone. Sands was one of the safeties, breaking in on the receiver, Pondexter. There you see the defensive line for St. Thomas Aquinas. Mike Della Carpini should be very active up there. Terry Smith, the undersized linebacker with a tremendous heart. An outstanding player there in the middle. And Derek Irvin leads the secondary. Derek, the younger brother of Michael Irvin, now with the Dallas Cowboys. Whitfield to throw again, can't find the man he wants, and he's going to be sacked behind the line of scrimmage as Brian Sadowski makes the play. Now, one of the keys to Leon having success is to protect Whitfield, the quarterback, and that time Brian Sadowski, number 56, ultimately makes the sack. Uh, there's a bit of a pressure that forces Whitfield to try and scramble out of the pocket, but he can't go right because Sadowski is right in his face, who finally gets credit for that sack. A big loss on the play all the way back to the 19-yard line. Maybe second down, 23 yards to go. Looking for the quick slant. It wasn't there. Whitfield will be sacked again. And this time on the play, it is Wayne Blair, a junior linebacker, making the sack at the four-yard line. Initially, though, Larry, it was Jim Palmer, number 43, the defensive end. You see Palmer right there. 
forcing Whitfield to go deep, deeper into that pocket. Uh, really, it was a four-man rush, a very base defense, no blitz, putting pressure on quickly on the Lions. And you saw Sadowski, the second man there, who had the earlier sack. Third down and about a mile and a half, and that'll only be about half a mile for Joe McGriff. Sean Sands gets in on the tackle from the four-yard line. He picked up about a dozen, but that still leaves them about 26 yards shy of a first down. It's hard to add up all the yards out there. <laughs> uh, that one pass completion moved the ball up to around the 32-yard line, then they went backwards after that because of the pressure of the pass rush. Madsen to punt it away. Wilkerson, number three, but that ball is, did he block it? No, a flag on the play. They say he did not touch it. And the ball will be fielded at the 43. Wilkerson runs with it, and it'll be run out of bounds at the 25, but the punter was roughed. Well, that's an extremely close play. Daryl Porter was obviously going for the ball, going for the football, out in front of the kicker. I don't know. He went right over top of the football. I don't know that he made contact, except he certainly did make contact with Greg Madston, the punter who uh, seems to have his uh, knee injured because of the collision. And he was hit up above the knee. And sometimes with that leg whip that a kicker gives, he might have hyperextended that knee a little bit because of the collision. But that will be a personal foul for roughing the kicker. That is not ex that's not running into the kicker, is it, Jim? No. That, he was going for the football. And uh, Although, Larry, I, I think it uh, obviously was uh, accidental, unintentional. He went for the point where he thought the ball was going to be. Foul. White. Roughing a kicker, automatic first down. Daryl Porter does everything perfectly that you're supposed to do except swat the football. He's right on top of it. He probably surprised himself that he would have been able to get that close and just simply did not swat the football away. But a huge and great effort by Porter, but Leon has a first down. And they run a little shovel pass inside to Sylvester Jones. He gets about four. Brian Sadowski there defensively. Also on the play, Mike Deli Carpini. So from fourth and 26, a 15-yard penalty, but an automatic first down. There's Jones with his 11th catch of the season. 1,200 yards running with the football as well. And he's just a junior. Back in the shotgun is the quarterback, Whitfield. Whitfield rolls to his left. He has a little running room, turns it upfield. And he gets about three or four yards. Wayne Blair gets there along with Terry Smith. Now we talked about Terry Smith, but did you see the speed of the other inside linebacker, Wayne Blair, there as the shotgun formation broke down? Whitfield had to scramble. He was in the open field, but uh, the big linebacker, Blair, that 6'1", 215, only a junior, really scrambled out there and quickly made the tackle. Third down and three. Inside they go, first down yardage plus as Joe McGriff busts through the line. Matt Gullah makes the tackle, but it's a Leon first down. Let's go down to the field to Art. Well, Greg Madsen is going to be okay. He hyperextended his knee just a little bit, but he'll be all right and be able to go back into the ball game. Uh, an interesting story on him, he's a soccer player who just learned how to kick a football last March, and he learns, uh, evidently learned how to kick it pretty well, and he will be able to go back in and kick it again today. Okay, thanks, Art. Larry, a great block by right tackle Lance Kerpot on that last play on inside linebacker Terry Smith opened up that hole. Whitfield with good protection gets the ball to Thomas. And Maurice Thomas is down to the 36-yard line and another first down. Maurice Thomas with 41 receptions for over 600 yards coming into today's ball game. And you see why right there. Almost... 700 yards now after that catch. Look at the average per catch, over 16 yards. And look at the touchdowns. He's got 11 of them. Leon on the opening possession has a good drive going. Whitfield rolls out to the right. Tried to get away from Blair, couldn't do it. He's tripped up at about the 34, maybe the 33-yard line. It'll bring up second in a long seven. 
That's Mike Spencer, the defensive coordinator on the headset there, calling out uh, encouragement and instructions to his Raider defense. Once again, this is a multi-dimensional offensive attack that the Lions have, and it gives that defense tremendous problems. Whitfield swings it incomplete. Little bump after the play. The Leon side of the field wants a flag, but not much of a hit from Derek Irvin. That's right. Uh, no harm, no foul. He just made a little touch there, just said hello. Sylvester Jones was uh, very vulnerable right there because the ball had already gone right by him, but Derek Irvin just gave him a little bump. Well, immediately after those quarterback sacks, Leon has gone to more of a rollout game with their passing attack. And out of the shotgun. You got to believe that Jim Sauls, the coach, has been to a few coaching clinics uh, run by those uh, Seminoles in Tallahassee, and that shotgun's very effective. The field still rolling, gets it complete to his tight end, Shively. Shively inside the 25 for another first down. Terry Smith on the coverage for Aquinas, but Leon keeps driving on this opening possession. Anytime you get the uh, tight end involved in your offensive attack, and uh, you have a talented one like Shively, uh, it really does add multi-dimensions to your offensive attack. Shively over 300 yards receiving. Now they'll swing it out in the flat. Inside the 20, down to about the 17-yard line goes Joe McGriff. Blair and Gustin made the tackle, but Matt Gullah had a chance to get him for a loss and didn't make the play. Very difficult for Matt Gullah in the open field to make the tackle on a running back. Gullah 6'1", 190. Thought he had position, thought he had the tackle made, but it was not so, and the Lions are looking at uh, about second and maybe five, four. And St. Thomas Aquinas has called a timeout here. A six yard gain on the play Justin Whitfield five out of six for 47 yards came into this game with over 1500 yards passing 15 touchdowns he had been intercepted just eight times but he's showing a lot of poise in this opening drive and you'll recall that uh, it was the outstanding uh, quarterback effort uh, by Danny Warfel last year that was responsible for uh, doing in Aquinas and so they don't want that to happen again but this Whitfield kid uh, has similar talent, it seems. The Miami Heat is celebrating its fifth anniversary of NBA action here on Sports Channel with fast-paced action for you. We hope you'll tune in and follow in with a sense of rhythm, you know? There were none on my team in Detroit, I know that. Second down and four, Whitfield in trouble, just threw it incomplete, intended sort of for Jones, but I think Whitfield was just avoiding the loss. Whitfield is a senior, 6'1", 180 pounder. Very difficult for the Lions now as, as they move right to left on the screen. The receivers are looking right back into that bright Florida sunshine. As you see the shadows on the players when they take their positions in the offensive formation. Wide receivers having a difficult time at this time of day as they look back to their quarterback. Incomplete pass thrown for Sylvester Jones. And that'll bring up fourth down and four from the 17-yard line. Now, Leon has a pretty good kicking game, and they're going to send Greg Madsen out there to try the field goal. And that's just a few minutes after he suffered the injury to his kicking leg on that roughing the punter call. Madsen has made seven out of nine field goals this season. Spot will be the 23, it's a 33 yarder. Plenty of leg. And that kick is good. So the Lions of Tallahassee Leon take the opening kickoff, take advantage of a personal foul penalty against St. Thomas Aquinas and drive for the opening score as they put a field goal on the board here in Gainesville. Well, what initially was an excellent defensive start by the Raiders ended up being a excellent offensive effort and drive by the Lions and, and the difference was that roughing the punter. The Raiders had him shut down, were sacking Whitfield, giving him all kinds of problems. After the punt, 
They came out in the shotgun, were able to move the ball around to different receivers, and finally were able to punch it down there enough to get the field goal. And you know Jim Sauls has to love that drive. 62 yards, 6 minutes, 15 seconds off the clock. And it includes uh, the plays before the uh, attempt to block the punt. So uh, that drive had some help with that uh, yellow flag hitting the turf. You see some of Santa's helpers in the Aquinas band. It's getting to be about that time, isn't it? Doesn't feel like it, though. It's awful humid here at Florida Field this afternoon. As you mentioned, more like uh, October or late September. So Leon gets set to kick it off, and Aquinas will get their first shot offensively. Aquinas, a tremendously talented offensive football team. And a kick is a little roller, hits off an up back, and doubling back to pick it up is Keith Wilkerson. Wilkerson looking for some running room, gets through a few defenders, and is then backed up at around the 23 or 24 yard line, Brian Coop along with Desmond Henderson making the tackles on kick coverage for Leon. The offensive line for St. Thomas Aquinas, it's a good sized line led by the tackles, Hambright and Page. The receiving core, the star there, Derek Irvin, who has caught 30 passes, 10 of them for touchdowns. And in the backfield, Sean Stutz, the quarterback, Wilkerson and Porter, each over 1,000 on the year. They'll run a lot of split back with those two. And that's what they start out in. Wilkerson runs into trouble and he'll be dropped. Perhaps for a loss, Mario Miller, the defensive tackle, makes the play. Checking the lineup for Leon, the up front, the man leading the way, Mario Miller, the Big Bend defensive player of the year. Up in the Tallahassee area, linebacking core of Thompson and Little. And in the secondary, Shively, Talbot Hall, and Trafton. Trafton, third leading tackler on the team from his strong safety spot. On second down, fumble. Porter appeared to get it back and save the turnover, but he gets nowhere on the play. It'll be third and long. Didn't look like Daryl Porter ever had a handle of it. Uh, Stutz never was able to deliver the ball the ball was bobbled. The exchange was never made at all. It looked like he expected the uh, tailback to be a little closer to him, but Daryl Porter had more depth than, than uh, was anticipated by Stutz. Stutz just under 50% passing on the year, and he'll be back to throw on third and long. Throws it, and it's batted away for Tallahassee Leon by Josh Trafton, the strong safety. Tried to get the ball to uh, Keith Wilkerson, I think. It was number three out there. The, one of the talented offensive backs. Stutz has 14 touchdown passes this year, but he's only thrown the ball a little over 100 times. They do not put the ball in the air that often. They have not had to because of those two outstanding running backs, Daryl Porter and Keith Wilkerson, toting the football. And Aquinas has to use a timeout. They were a man short on their punt coverage. Still had 16 seconds on the play clock as the player came running in late. But someone had already signaled for the timeout. So Aquinas has used two timeouts in the first eight minutes of this game. Very shaky start for the Raiders as they had the critical penalty that allowed the Lions to keep their scoring drive alive. Then they get shut down abruptly on their first offensive effort of the afternoon. And then... They have to call and waste the timeout because uh, someone failed to get on the field. Bobby Cantrell, the punter for St. Thomas Aquinas. Deep to return. Got Maurice Thomas for Leon along with Willie Hall. Hall 21 and Thomas 24. Thomas is the one they want to get it. He averages 21 yards per punt return. Three nothing ball game, Tallahassee Leon leading Fort Lauderdale St. Thomas Aquinas.
Good snap. And a decent punt, kind of wobbly, taken at the 38 and knocked immediately to the ground. Porter with excellent kick coverage for Aquinas. That is a 38-yard punt with minus one on the return. He'll take 39 net yards anytime you can get it in a high school championship battle with your punting game. So uh, there were some good things happening right there for the Raiders for really the first time this afternoon with the exception of those initial first few plays when they put all kind of pressure on Whitfield. Whitfield out there for his second possession. Hit five of his first six, then missed two in a row. And they had to settle for the field goal. Whitfield in trouble. Tries to get away. Can't do it. He'll be dropped. Come in the there quickly defensively. I'm sorry, Jim. Jim Palmer along with Matt Gulla. You bet, Larry. They came with a five-man rush. It looks like they're going to try and put the heat on Whitfield by uh, sending five men, at the down lineman plus a linebacker. And it worked uh, very effectively right there. Jim Sauls, the head coach at Tallahassee, Leon, talks about matching up with the number one team in the state, St. Thomas Aquinas. Oh, I think the ultimate challenge is for the state championship at a neutral site, not either by either, either team's home. And St. Thomas under George Smith done a tremendous job. Uh, our job will be to represent North Florida in the best manner we can. We've played a lot of good teams up there this year and come from behind several times. And uh, I have every confidence in our team's ability to uh, do a good job. Back-to-back -back sacks for the second time for that Aquinas defense. This time it's Wayne Blair and Jim Palmer. Blair being the linebacker, Palmer being the defensive end. Once again, the five-man rush, trying to put that additional pressure on Whitfield, not giving him the luxury of looking around for alternate receivers. They need 25 yards for a first down. Whitfield rolling right, throws it and completes it to Thomas. Maurice Thomas up to the 40-yard line, but he's still going to be shy of the first down, a 19-yard pickup for Leon. Willie Wright found himself matched up with Thomas right there and was being run away from as he pursued the receiver in his dragging route. Whitfield was able to buy a little time, look for the dragging route. But uh, the first punt of the afternoon now for the Lions of Leon. Last time, excuse Madison me, the was... second punt, but the other one never got off. <laughs> and we'll see Madsen here, who has at the punt blocked and or almost blocked. This one is blocked, picked up by Aquinas, and stumbling down to the ground is Jason Krupka, or he would have scored. But Aquinas has the ball at the 25. If we get a chance to look at this again, Porter almost seems to jump the gun. He seemed from our vantage point to, well, we don't quite pick it up, but he got such a quick start out of the blocks. You know how they say that a great sprinter will anticipate the gun? Well, right there, Porter really had a huge start, much faster than the last time, and he literally uh, had the football in his chest. So St. Thomas Aquinas gets that one, and they have great field position to start their second drive. Stutz to Wilkerson. Wilkerson tried to bounce it outside, and then he was met head-on by Raven Talbot, the corner. We're going to take another look at the punt block, and look at the bottom of your screen for number two, Daryl Porter, the very bottom. Now let, let's watch him, and you see that quick start? I don't know. We couldn't see the movement of the ball, but he was off like a rocket and uh, they had no chance at all to get that ball away I'll tell you the next time leon punts we need to keep an eye on the center because he's one of those guys that sort of lifts the ball and then snaps it well, and i think porter reacted to the lift well he better not anymore because <laughs> porter will be in there every time they're gonna have to put somebody over on it wilkerson can't get outside he'll be tackled for a big loss josh trafton there first for leon but they did blow the whistle, which was the right call up around the 30-yard line. So a lot of, of that going backwards was irrelevant, but a huge uh, defensive effort by the Lions of Leon right there. Loss of seven on that play brings up third down and 14, and that's the situation St. Thomas Aquinas High School will face when we begin the second quarter of the Florida Class 4A State High School Football Championship game. After the last year, they trail here by three, and they face third and 14 at the Leon 30. 
Stutz, under pressure, will be dropped for a 10-yard loss. Mario Miller, the defensive tackle, he's just 215, but boy, is he quick. Absolutely right. That's the key, the quickness of Mario Miller, the defensive tackle. He's just not getting blocked. He's able to break down the blocking effort uh, quickly and put the heat on the quarterback as he drops back and tries to get downfield. Lance Kerpata, the senior 295-pounder, helped finish him off. And on fourth and very long, here's the punt for Aquinas. Hits at the 14, and it will roll down to the two and is down on the one-yard line. So Aquinas with a 38-yard punt and absolutely no return, and Leon is backed up in the shadow of the goalposts. Well, Barry Cantrell better go over and thank Daryl Porter as quick as he can because Daryl Porter is racing to that corner to get there before the football does. And Barry Cantrell obviously very excited that uh, he has pinned the Leon Lions inside their one-yard line. See the guy with the Aquinas shirt, the big guy in the background, that's University of Florida freshman defensive end Cameron Davis, a standout on this Aquinas team last year. And he's right here wishing them well again. Running left side, no room at all. I think uh, Aquinas had seven Division I prospects uh, leave the high school campus and go off to play. Eleven? Eleven of them. Two others signed with smaller schools. That's hard to believe, isn't it? 11 kids out of one high school program. There you see the offense. Leon had the one nice drive. Aquinas got the great field position and then went backwards. On second down. Little cross action with Sylvester Jones, and he doesn't get very far. Terry Smith there defensively along with Sadowski. And it'll be a third down and about five from the six-yard line. Terry Smith's uh, dad uh, was a football coach for many years, and uh, Smith has that savvy, that understanding of the game, that knows for the ball, and even though he's not big at 5'9", 170, he's just truly outstanding at that defensive in li inside linebacker position. Looks like some confusion, and Whitfield is dropped for a loss. Jim Palmer got in quickly defensively, but Whitfield turned around and handed to a back who wasn't there. Well, that was a terrific uh, stand by the Raiders, especially when they had the opportunity to keep the Lions deep in their own territory. This might really be a change of momentum here or allow the Raiders to get their offense untracked as they're going to continue to be in uh, Lion territory. And keep an eye on number two, Daryl Porter. He roughed Madsen the first time, blocked it the second. Not much pressure this time, and Madsen gets off a of beauty. Wilkerson fields at the 48. Takes it upfield, now he tries to circle wide, gives up some real estate, and ends up with about a three-yard return after 47 yards of running. And Aquinas, for the second straight possession, will start in Leon territory, a 42-yard punt, three yards on the return. Of course, uh, Keith Wilkerson had over 1,500 yards rushing the football out of the tailback position, so he's pretty confident when he has the ball in his arm that he can make something happen in the open field, but right there, the coverage was just too good. And we'll see if the Raiders from Aquinas can do anything with this opportunity. Looking for their first state championship. Sweeping right side, Wilkerson cuts it inside, gets five, still on his feet for about eight or nine yards on first down. The cut was the impressive thing right there. He was sprinting to the sideline, planted the right foot, and then just blew right down the field. Watch, watch the move right here. He's gonna plant his right foot right there and make the cut. Desmond Henderson finally On the outside right there, trying to make something happen on defense. Wilkerson, as Jim mentioned, over 1,500 yards, 20 touchdowns running with the football. On second and short, they go inside. Smith, Smith to the 25-yard line and a first down. So Terry Smith, they list him at 5'9". That's being generous. 
but he just busted through that hole. Well, we talked about Terry Smith, the inside linebacker, and they let him play offense as well because he just has a knack for the game. They were telling me before the game, Larry, that he scored or was responsible for seven touchdowns last year on defense. On defense. That's hard to believe, isn't it? That is remarkable. You know, picking up fumbles, intercepting passes, that type of thing. There goes Wilkerson, and he will score. 24 yards and a touchdown for Keith Wilkerson. 24 yards untouched. A huge hole. Let's take a look to the right of center. Jamie Bowen's the center. Mike Curry's the right guard, and they just do a fantastic job. Brandon Hambrick, the right tackle. Nobody even touches Keith Wilkerson. And so Aquinas has the lead after giving up an opening field goal. And Alex Bader will try to add the extra point to make it a 7-3 ball game, and he does. 7.34 to go in the second quarter. St. Thomas Aquinas goes on top. Well, also a missed tackle by Michael Holmes right there. He didn't realize, I don't think, that uh, Wilkerson had the football as he streaked right by him. The play hit so quickly. The center, Jamie Bowen, left guard Jason Milgram really opened up that hole for the Aquinas offensive line and Wilkerson in the end zone for the 21st time this season. Running the ball, that is. He has a couple of others on returns. 45 yards in three plays, a little different than their last possession. But there was a combination of uh, reasons right there why they got on the board. The defense, after the terrific punt, Pin the Lions inside their one. The defense came out and did the job, shut them down, forced the punt. They got decent field position, and then the offense really got things together right there with the streaking touchdown run by Wilkerson. So Aquinas will kick it off for the second time today. Alex Bader, the senior. You see in high school football, they kick off from the 40-yard line. College football, they kick off from the 35. And if it breaks the plane of the goal line, it cannot be run back. That one bounces past Jones. He'll let it go on in. Sylvester Jones couldn't handle the funny hop off the kick by Bader. And as a result, Leon will start first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. Tallahassee Leon has a couple of state championships to its credit, having won in 1969 and in 74. Also state runner-up in 72 and 75. And some names like Jimmy Jordan and Wally Woodham played at Tallahassee Leon. Brad Culpepper. Tony Robinson was an outstanding quarterback at Tennessee. Tennessee yeah. yeah, great tradition that uh, Gene Cox had uh, built up at Leon over the years, much like George Smith has done over the last 18 years as he's led this Raider program. Whitfield hit as he throws. It's incomplete in and out of the hands of the tight end, Brett Shively, but an excellent pass rush by Palmer made Whitfield throw it more quickly than he wanted to. Aquinas last year lost the state championship game. This year we asked Coach George Smith to talk about the differences between this team and last year's runner-up. We had some very, very, very good talent. I mean, uh, the National Signing Day, we signed 11 Division I players off that team, and ended up with with 13 kids either division one or going to academies and those type of things but uh this particular team seems to be a team that uh, has put its mind together and uh, you use the old cliche uh, they're very close and uh I, I don't know if that is a cliche i think we are a pretty close team and his team has leon in a little bit of trouble third and ten well i i think sometimes you have a uh more of a unity of purpose after you've been to the big dance and and uh, weren't able to walk away with a trophy and uh, those kids probably came back this summer saying hey uh, we can get back there again and let's do it and uh, that's been their focus all season long on third down lunging catches made for Leon and a first down Maurice Thomas the sophomore wide receiver with the play 
Talked about Maurice Thomas with 11 touchdowns this year. 41 receptions coming into today's ball game. Plenty of protection right here. You see what Whitfield can do if he has time to stand in, in that pocket. Terry Smith making the tackle. 12 yards on the completion. First and 10 for Leon inside seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Shovel pass caught by Jones. Jones to the 40. Jones 45 still on his feet to the 49 yard line. Excellent run after the catch by Sylvester Jones. The strong safety Billy Gustin finally wrapped him up at the 49, but not before a pickup of 17 yards. The shovel pass acts much like a draw. You invite the defenders into your backfield and then just shuttle or shovel the ball to a back. And then Sylvester Jones does the rest and he has great uh, broken field running ability. Whitfield runs right into the tackle and is knocked to the ground, Aquinas. We don't have a number there for number 92. He doesn't exist. He's not really out there. Pay no attention to that man. <laughs> They've made a <laughs> jersey change. It looks like somebody's jersey got uh, changed on us. We apologize for that. Well, he's a pretty big guy. Let's start looking at all the big guys on the roster, I suppose. Gain of about five, maybe a little less. On second down, Whitfield. That pass was almost intercepted as his intended receiver, Jones, fell down. Willie Wright could have picked it up at the 40, but was not able to go down and get it. Well, the Lions really have not got on track running the football. Uh, they're capable of throwing the football with great success, but they like to have that balance. They like to be able to do both, and really the Raiders have not allowed the Lions to run to any extent this afternoon, but it's uh, Whitfield out of the shotgun that continues to cause problems. Whitfield rolling left, has running room. If he can get outside, he'll get the first down. I don't think he did. Just a little bit shy. Terry Smith, Billy Gustin closed on him right around the 42-yard line, and that will be short of first down yardage. Yeah, Jim Sauls will have a difficult decision right here as Whitfield looks like he's running all the way here as he reversed out of the pocket quickly and then came across field, but he's uh, at least a yard short, and it seems that uh, they've decided the punt will do them no good or that uh, they don't want to take the chance of trying to go for the corner and having the Raiders get it on their own 20, so they're going to try and pick up the first down. Fourth down. They're going to throw for it, and down he goes. He was already down when he threw it. It is a quarterback sack. Aquinas ball at the 47-yard line. Brian Sadowski, number 56. It's a quick timing route, but the coverage was there, not allowing... Whitfield to get the ball off when the knee goes down, the whistle blows, the play's over, even though he tried to get rid of the football as he was going down, the knee was already down. Nice call by the officials, and that was a bit of a wasted opportunity by Leon and an excellent defensive stand by the St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders. If you can get three or four sacks a game for a defense, you're awfully good at rushing the passer. Aquinas now has five quarterback sacks on Whitfield. Minus 34 on the ground for the Leon quarterback. Here's Stutz. Stutz throws against the grain, and somehow it's dropped by Desmond Henderson right in his hands. Well, we talked about the difficulty of the receivers looking back into that sun. It's also a problem for a defender who's not expecting the ball in the first place. Desmond Henderson, number 55, had the ball land almost directly in his face mask right there, but was not able to come up with the interception and the turnover. Look at this, uh, Larry. 95 yards passing for Leon, none for the Raiders. The player we were wondering about, number 92, is Wayne Blair, who was wearing 55. So for the Aquinas defense, we'll keep an eye on that. Inside Wilkerson, nothing there. The big defensive tackle, Lance Kerpata, got there first. Kerpata not listed as a starter on the defense. 
but the 6'3", 295-pounder has been in there on every play. He looks like a candidate for one of those John Madden teams. You know, he has a wide body and getting out there in that uh, interior and grabbing people, throwing them around, getting dirty. He's got to get some blood first. He's right across the uh, nose of the center right now. The center being Jamie Bowen. He's only 80 pounds lighter. Stutz on third down in trouble, and he's going to be sacked. Mario Miller, along with Frank Pondexter, on the quarterback sack, and Aquinas will kick it away. Well, you know, we come on camera before the kickoff and talk about the offenses of both teams, and really it's the defenses stealing the thunder. Neither offense getting untracked, and it's not because they lack talent. It's just because the defenses are controlling the tempo in this ballgame. On the punt, a driving wobbly kick. It's muffed at the 20. Now picking it up, Maurice Thomas looking for running room to the outside. Thomas has some blockers. He's up to midfield. Thomas, one block away from going all the way, but he doesn't get it as Gullah makes the tackle. But Maurice Thomas returns it all the way to the Aquinas 22-yard line. Matt Gulla does make the touchdown-saving tackle. Maurice Thomas initially muffs the ball, avoids the first tackling attempt, and that just kind of froze the uh, coverage team momentarily and allowed that wall to form. Thomas getting behind the wall and then he's got a good 30 or 40 yards before he gets in traffic again. Makes the cut back and then finally it's Gullah 44 hustling all the way down to make the tackle on uh, about the 22 yard line. There you see coach Jim Sauls of Tallahassee Leon. We asked the coach what it would take for his team to win the class 4A state championship. I think in a game like this, uh, the team that, uh, if all things being equal, the team that's able to make the fewest mistakes and play good, uh, tight football, good sound football, will generally win, unless one is just obviously better than the other. And if it is, then I don't know if anything will work. By the way, Wayne Blair, number 55, turn number 92, is back again wearing number 55. On first down, they run it with Sylvester Jones. Jones. Won't get back to the line of scrimmage, fumble the ball, and Aquinas has it back. Well, just as Jim Sauls was talking about the big play being the difference with two evenly matched teams, he's exactly right. It, first, it was the punt, the long punt return that was the big break for the Lions, and now they give the ball right back to the Raiders on the turnover. Oh, you can't carry the football out like that. Sylvester Jones had it in one hand. It was Willie Wright, I think, number seven, Jim Palmer in there. Wright knocked it loose, and Terry Smith recovered the fumble. So Aquinas with a first down at their own 27-yard line, 2.07 to go. In the first half, St. Thomas Aquinas from Fort Lauderdale leading by a score of 7-3. They run inside. Porter driving through traffic, picks up about seven. And the clock now becomes a factor for Aquinas. They have just one timeout and less than a minute 45 left. Now this is a quickly played first half because the ball's been on the ground so much and the clock has not stopped. Uh, the defense is dominating uh, play. Uh, many times the uh, pass was attempted, but the quarterback had to eat it and the clock continued to run. You see the humidity taking its toll on the players uh, along the sideline. We talked about it feels much like September instead of uh, close to Christmas time. Aquinas in no hurry at all. They go with the toss outside. Wilkerson, and Wilkerson gets the first down up to about the 38-yard line, but now just 115 remaining here in the opening half of the Florida Class 4A championship game. It's a hot one. For a real perspective on that, let's go down to the field to the only guy down there wearing a sport coat. Art? Well, I tell you, I wish I wasn't wearing a sport coat right now because it's very hot and very humid down here on the field. It's taking it out on me and everyone on the sidelines, but more importantly, it's taking it out on the folks out on the football field. We'll see how that affects them by the fourth quarter play if they still have any stamina left by that time. So it's interesting, even though St. Thomas Aquinas is from down in Fort Lauderdale, George Smith was not happy about the heat. He wished it had been a cooler day, and I'm sure... Jim Sauls feels the same way. Reverse for Aquinas. Derek Irvin. Irvin across the 45. 
Irvin will step out of bounds at the 47 of Tallahassee. Leon Derek Irvin on the reverse picks up 14 yards and a first down. Just as we were about to say, it seemed the Raiders were content to run out the clock. They come back with the uh, excellent reverse to the uh, very talented Derek Irvin. Nice block by Mike Curry in the open field right there. Irvin finally forced out of bounds, but not before he's in Lion territory. And, and now they do have a chance, perhaps, to, to get down there and get some points on the board. Sean Stutz has thrown 14 touchdown passes this season. Back to throw. They're trying to set up a screen, and they get it right side. There's Porter inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Two great blocks, Larry, by offensive lineman uh, center Jamie Bowen and, and right guard Mike Curry, number 60. That play was set up beautifully by the Raiders. Stutz does a great job of inviting the pressure, then dumps the ball out to Porter. And we hope we can pick up those blocks. There's one by Curry, and there's the other by Bowen. And all of a sudden, Porter was in the open field right there. If he'd not tripped, he could have gone all the way. Watch the two blocks along the sideline. There's the block by 60, Curry. And then, as we mentioned, the center, Bowen, hustling out there. There's Derek Irvin, 10 yards further downfield, waiting for someone in. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. You know, he ran a streak route to invite the secondary to chase him. Then they invite the lineman to chase the quarterback, and that's what spreads things out uh, on that screen pass. And if a guy comes rushing back to try to make the block, invariably he'll push someone from behind. There you see Daryl Porter, the senior. Aquinas has called their final timeout. When he catches the ball, he makes things happen. 21 yards per reception for Daryl Porter. He has scored four of the 14 receiving touchdowns for Aquinas, the other 10 to Derek Irvin. And now with 54 seconds left in the first half, Aquinas has the ball at the 26. They are out of timeouts. But when you talk about the Raider passing attack, you're not uh, talking about quantity. They don't put it in the air that much, but it's a quality passing game when they choose to do so with those two guys you mentioned being the primary receivers. Stutz. In the pocket, throws right side. Derek Irvin run out of bounds at the 15. 11 yards and another first down, and all of a sudden, Aquinas, with great clock management, still has 47 seconds to work with. Raven Talbot that time in coverage on Irvin. I saw Irvin just sprint right at him, made him back off a bit, and then Stutz was able to get the ball to him as he hooked up. Derek Irvin, unlike his older brother, a little guy, 5'9", 150, senior wide receiver. Remember Michael with the Miami Hurricanes and now with the Dallas Cowboys, 6'3". Great big target. Stutz rolling left, throws it for Irvin at the 5. Derek Irvin is stopped short of first down yardage at the 6-yard line. And now time is called from an official in the back and the flag is thrown on the flag. Illegal procedure called against Aquinas. I'm oh. still looking. There it is at the 10-yard line. It came out of uh, out of the end zone. A huge break for the Lions. A major disappointment for the Raiders, obviously. Let's see if we can. Well, we didn't see the motion there, and we didn't see it initially. If that's the call, I don't see it. It could have been any number of things, though. Illegal. Procedure could be six men on the line of scrimmage as well. Yeah, but that's generally called by the line judge and a side judge. That, uh, that guy was five yards downfield who yeah. threw that flag. That, that was a mystery flag. <laughs> now they've started the clock again. Aquinas is in a huddle. That's not correct. <laughs> they should not be running the clock. The clock was stopped before the previous play. It should remain stopped. Aquinas has lost out on about 15 seconds because of that. They fake the draw. Stutz looking deep. Now he throws it on the sideline for Irvin at the 12-yard line with 12 seconds left in the half. And they will go for the field goal. 
after the penalty, the clock would not start until... It goes back to what was the previous situation. If it was running, then you start it again. If it wasn't, then you don't. And, uh, Aquinas loses a couple extra shots at the end zone, and we'll see if Bader can make the field goal. Six in a row. This will be a 29-yarder. And he pushed it way to the right. No follow-through at all on Bader's part, and if you don't follow through, the ball will sail on you. And as a result, St. Thomas Aquinas loses a golden opportunity to add to their 7-3 advantage. It seemed with a little over a minute to go that they weren't going to even try to take a chance and gamble and try and come up with a big play and move down the field to score, but then the reverse to Irvin and the screen pass developed beautifully, and... And then they had the chance and were not able to convert to points. And let's see what the Lions from Tallahassee Leon do with eight seconds to go. They run right up the middle. And they get very little. One yard maybe for Josh Trafton. And that will do it for the first half of the Florida Class 4A High School Championship game. Tallahassee Leon got on the board first with a field goal. After that field goal, St. Thomas Aquinas was able to drive for a touchdown. They lead 7-3 at the half. Let's go down to the field to Art Schifrin. We're making too many mistakes on offense and special teams. We're going to correct that or we're going to get beat. Talk about the special teams there. You really seem like you're having some problems on the punt snap and the punting game itself. Yes, they right. got pressure from the outside and it hurt us. And we went back to a tight punt and we're going to have to take care of that or they're going to beat us. Okay, very good, Coach. Best luck in the second half. Coach Jim Sauls of Tallahassee, Leon, his team trails by a score of 7-3 at halftime here in Gainesville. We'll take this time out. We'll be back with our halftime here on St. Thomas Aquinas with a 7-3 halftime lead here in Gainesville over the Lions from Tallahassee, Leon. And here in the state of Florida, they have now named a Mr. Basketball, the outstanding high school senior in the state and Art is our high school football player in the state. Let's go down to the field and Art is with Mr. Florida High School Football. Yes, and Mr. Hi Florida High School football is Jamie German from uh, Fort Miles High School. You knew you were going to be in the running because you were the 4A player of the year, but what did it mean to you when you found out that you were the inaugural Mr. Florida football? Uh, I mean, a lot to me. This is the best accomplishment I had in my whole life. This will be something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Okay, now obviously, uh, as a Mr. Florida football, all the recruiters are looking for you. You've narrowed it down to five schools that you're looking for as far as college. What are they? Uh, Michigan, Notre Dame, Syracuse, Florida, and Miami. Okay, well, the back Aquinas, you played Aquinas last week uh, in the semifinal game. Tell us about that team. What do you think about them? Um, they're a great team. They got two of the best combination running backs in the state of Florida. And, um, with um, they basically a power football team. They come straight in, no tricks or no, but they did um, do a few tricks on us that hurt us, and they won the game. Hopefully, they can win out here tonight. I'm pulling for them all the way. Tell us about your season. You seem like a Tameric Vanover kind of a player. You kind of do it all at the skill positions. Well, I'm try my team helped me out a lot. They was behind me 100%. The coaches, we played together as a unit. I made a couple big plays. My teammates made big plays. Um, so happened, I was blessed with talent, and I'm thankful for that. Okay, well, thanks a lot for joining us here at halftime. We'll be back after this with another special guest, Ron Allen, president of the Florida High School Sports Association. where the score at the half is uh, St. Thomas 7 and the uh, Lions of Tallahassee Leon 3. And joining me now is the president of the Florida High School Athletic or Activities Association, rather, Ron Allen. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, this is the fourth year that you've had the championships at a neutral site, the second year here in Gainesville. How has that gone overall? It's gone real, real nice. This is a beautiful facility. It's a pleasure to be here and all of a lot of positive comments from fans and coaches and players. And it's just, a, just a thrill to be here. Do you feel like it's going to be sticking at a neutral site? I don't know. That's going to be uh, up to the board of directors uh, in March. Uh, I would say it's a 50-50 chance at this time. Okay. I'm hearing a lot of talk uh, from a lot of the 1A coaches that they're upset about the private schools dominating things at that level. Is there any plans to try and maybe create a separate division for private and public schools? Art, uh, you're right. There's a lot of discussion about that, and I'm sure it's on the agenda for the March meeting. I've had a few comments from people around the state, and I'm sure it will be discussed very soon. What do you feel might be some of the things that you can do about that? I don't know yet uh, what we're going to do. There are a lot of options available to us. I think the best thing to do is let everybody speak that wants to speak and uh, see what's uh, said and then make some good decisions for everybody. 
What about the uh, the overall state of uh, Florida football uh, as it's been the past couple of years? Oh, it's wonderful. It gets better and better. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Well, thanks for joining us at halftime. Larry and Jim will be back with your halftime stats and highlights right after this. Once again, the halftime score, the Raiders 7, the Lions 3. You're watching Florida football on Sports. For Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas, 13-0 with a 7-3 lead over Tallahassee Leon. Leon unranked with a record of 11 wins and two losses coming into today's ball game. And it started out with a couple of quarterback sacks for that St. Thomas defense. And it looked like they were going to force a punt, get great field position, but a little collision. Well, they did start out great on defense. Uh, Porter, Daryl Porter, number two, inadvertently makes contact with Greg Madsen right here. And uh, that allowed that drive to continue because there was the contact and the Lions have a chance to get on the board early. And there's Madsen after getting knocked over as the punter. He comes in and drills the field goal. And Leon takes an early 3-0 lead after Aquinas couldn't get anything going. It's time for another meeting between Daryl Porter and Greg Mazden. This time Daryl Porter gets an even better jump off the snap, makes the block and gives his team tremendous field position as it was number 45, Krupa, picking up the block. Then Terry Smith got a chance on the second play after that block punt, and Smith rambled for 11 yards, putting the ball down to about the 25-yard line. Wilkerson went on to score the touchdown on the very next snap, and that made it a 7-3 ball game. And then Aquinas had a good drive late in the half, but their field goal kicker, Alex Bader, couldn't connect. Just pushed the ball off to the right, and this game remains very much in doubt with uh, the Raiders out of uh, Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas leading by only four points over the Leon Lions. And let's go down to the field. Coach George Smith is with Art Schifrin. Well, Coach Smith, uh, in the first half there, some penalties and special teams really played a big factor in things. How would you think it went? Well, I thought we came out real hard in the first, and we blocked the punt, and they called us for roughing the punter, and our team went flat, and we haven't played very well since then. It's, uh, we have not played a good football game right now. We're not getting off the ball. We're, we're putting too much pressure on our defense offensively. We've got to get going and get and play our game and move the, the ball. If, if we do that, we'll be okay. If we don't, they're our second-half team. We're going to have some problems. I thought we came out. We're ready to play, get a bad break. We went flat and, and just started to get back up after that towards the end of the first half. But... Not pleased right now. We got to get going. Okay. Well, best of luck in the Thank second you. half, coach. Thanks a lot. And we'll be back with our first half stats and the third quarter of the Class 4A state championship game. But first, this time out, you're watching Florida High School football championship action on Sports Channel. Time and the defense dominating as you would expect from the scoreboard, and the uh, quarterback sacks a big part in the total offense of each team. You heard Coach George Smith from Aquinas talk about the, the lack of his offense helping out their defense. You know, Aquinas generally has a 300-yard game rushing the football, only 49 yards rushing right now. But Leon is even worse off with minus 10, and a lot of that coming, as you mentioned, because of the sack of, sacks of Whitfield, the quarterback. The passing game uh, has been... Uh, Rather mediocre for both teams, although Leon has had more success out of that shotgun, obviously. Leon has lost 48 yards in quarterback sacks in the first half. Aquinas has lost 18. So you could add 66 yards of total offense, make those numbers look a little bit more respectable. Only one touchdown in the opening half of this Class 4A championship game, and Keith Wilkerson scores it for Aquinas. Daryl Porter, his uh, teammate in the backfield, has been outstanding, and here Wilkerson shows what he can do as he sprints 24 yards untouched into the end zone, and that's the only touchdown scored by either team in the first half. And again, I think we need to probably uh, praise the defenses more than complain about the offenses. I think the defenses have really taken away a lot of things from the opponent's offense. Uh, you could tell from Art's conversation with George Smith that the Aquinas coach is not thrilled with his guys right now, but I think he has to be awfully happy with his defensive effort. As for uh, the Aquinas Raiders, they will get the ball first and they will defend the south end zone, which is to our right for the upcoming third quarter of the Class 4A championship game. Three Florida State champs have already been 
crowned in Class 1A, Jacksonville University Christian wins it for the second time in a row, the third time in four years, and the fourth time in six years. In Class 2A, Frostproof, which lost last year's title game, a 14-13 winner over Newberry. And in Class 3A, Dade City Pasco with a state championship trophy. So three down, we've got this game, and coming up later, the 5A championship game, Bradenton Manatee and Fort Lauderdale Dillard, two more traditional Florida powers like these two schools. One thing we can say about uh, this matchup right here, both these teams are used to being productive on offense and getting points on the board. You know, 35 points, 42 points. They've really been blowing out a lot of their opponents all season long, and I'm sure it's a bit of a shock to them to get in a matchup here in the state championship, but all of a sudden their offenses, the wheels just uh, seem to be coming off the wagon and they're not getting anything done on offense after having such great success, both teams, all year long. And set to kick it off for Leon is their kicker, number 14, Madsen. It's taken by Wilkerson at around the nine. Right up the middle, Wilkerson gets through the pile. Wilkerson is still on his feet. One man left. He is going to make the tackle for Leon. That's Justin Whitfield playing free safety on kick coverage. And he saves a touchdown at the Leon 36. Somehow, Greg Madsden, number 14, who kicked the ball off, and Nathan Bunning, number 40, for Leon, collide and knock each other off the attempted tackle of Wilkerson. Not unusual to hit a quick crease like that in the wedge, but then look at the two Lion players knock each other off, and you think right for a moment, Wilkerson might go all the way, but it's not the case as uh, Whitfield makes the tackle. On first down, second man through is Porter, and he is straightened up. Trafton, along with Jamie Thompson. This rivalry goes way back, doesn't it? <laughs> Those guys aren't messing around, are they? A couple thousand years or so. I don't know who was favored in that original matchup. A couple of yards on that play for Porter just inside the 35. So Aquinas with a great opportunity to extend its lead. Stutz, quick hitch pattern on the right flat to Irvin. Irvin drops the ball out of bounds right near first down yardage at about the 26 yard line. Little there defensively for Leon. Raven Talbot, the cornerback, has his hands full right here covering Irvin. Watch him break on the ball right there. Gets nothing but air. Derek Irvin just too quick for Raven Talbot right there in that short little uh, area of the field. Sean Stutz, the quarterback for Aquinas, leads his team to the line of scrimmage. First down at the 26 of Leon, opening drive, third quarter. Porter gets a yard. First man to hit him is Ketter Little, junior linebacker, 190-pounder. There you have a look at Little, the junior inside linebacker. Of course, the inside linebackers are the guys called upon to make most of the tackles. The defensive linemen trying to create havoc at the line of scrimmage by slanting and taking gaps and things of that nature and freeing up their linebackers to make the tackles. On second down, they go with the pitch. Wilkerson runs right into the pile. First man to greet him is Mario Miller. Now that time, Mario Miller created such havoc that he was able to escape and make the tackle. Watch for number 54, the defensive tackle to the left of the screen. And also that big nose guard, number 75, in there. So it's a third down. There you see Wilkerson with 35 yards on the day and 24 of those on his touchdown run. They have to get inside the 17-yard line. Stutz. Throws it left side, he completes it. Inside the 10 yard line, fighting down inside the five, Lenny Eterno. First and goal, Aquinas. What a beautiful job of running with the football after he makes the catch. 
Lenny Eterno, number 25, runs the short sideline route. Stutz does a beautiful job of getting the ball to him. Look at that move along the sideline. Then another right here, almost breaks that tackle. Eterno, the senior, only 150 pounds, 5'7". There you get a good look at him. And on first and goal, Stutz the fade route to Derek Irvin. Can't get to it. A little overthrown. Raven Talbot had good coverage for Leon. Derek Irvin lined himself not that far away from the interior line of scrimmage, so he had a lot of real estate to work with on that fade route. You see he's got plenty of room to work with, but the ball is overthrown. They run out of real estate, but uh, that play started at uh, upon alignment. Irving, Irvin knowing that he needed that extra real estate, but uh, the fade in the deep corner does not work. Now this time Irvin's way out uh, along the sideline. He might be coming inside. Try to run inside Porter. Porter met behind the line of scrimmage. He will not get back to the original line as Coder Little, along with Josh Trafton, are there defensively. And Brett Shavley. A lot of red jerseys right there. There's Little making the hit. Shavley finishing him off. Hey, Lance Carpata, number 75 for Leon, is just clogging the middle and making it very difficult for Aquinas to get any kind of maneuvering room between the guards. He's one of those wide bodies that you like uh, taking up space in that interior, and he's doing a lot more than that. He's throwing bodies around. Stutz rolling right, throws too hard, too high for Eterno, as Eterno and Irvin were both within just a yard or two of each other. It created like, quite a traffic jam. Yeah, it looks like that pass route broke down. Irvin's supposed to go inside. They won't let him go inside, so he starts working outside, and what he does is work his way right back into Eterno's uh, route. The ball was too hot, though. No catch. Here comes the three-point attempt. Alex Bader with a glorified extra point. And he puts it right through the middle from 22 yards away. So St. Thomas Aquinas High School takes the opening kick of the second half thanks to a 55-yard kickoff return and goes in for another score to make it a 10-3 game. But for Leon, nice defensive stand to stay within one score. Absolutely true. The Raiders could have, uh, you know, gotten a... Uh, uh, an additional pad to their lead if they perhaps could have worked in for the touchdown, but uh, they had to settle for the three. So actually both teams win a little bit right there in that uh, transition. Well, both teams don't win on America's favorite pastime, baseball's greatest games. You'll be able to relive some of the great moments in baseball history right here each week on Sports Channel, regular season, postseason games, even all-star games. Baseball's greatest games. Check your local listings for the availability in your area. We're at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field in Gainesville, the site of the Florida High School Football Championships for the second consecutive year. That uh, status will be rebid by the Florida High School Activities Association in March. Gainesville will be back there bidding, as will uh, expected to be Tallahassee, Jacksonville, possibly Orlando and Tampa as well. 32-yard drive for the field goal by St. Thomas Aquinas. Of course, the neutral site was Daytona Beach prior to moving here to Jacksonville. It was at Daytona Beach for a couple of years. A little sky kick to around the 20-yard line. It is fielded by an up back for Leon, and making the catch and the run is Coder Little, the linebacker. And he gets the ball up to about the 30 or 31-yard line, and that might be part of Bader's sore ankle. He injured his ankle making a tackle last week in the state semifinals. He missed a field goal earlier today and may not be able to drive the ball like he would like to do. Yeah, I'm sure it has its effect on him. Great field position here for the Lions, though. From the 30. They run inside and picking up seven or eight yards, Sylvester Jones, Willie Wright there for Aquinas to make the tackle, but a nice first down pickup for Leon. One of the things that did not happen in the first half for the Lions was they were not able to get a running game on track. As we look at Whitfield's stats, eight of 14 for 95 yards. He's doing an excellent job, but 
the running game really not um, much of a factor for the Lions in the first half. They come out running here in the third quarter, though. There's the fullback, and Terry Smith greets him and drives him back. Jones got the carry, but is stopped shy of first down yardage by Terry Smith. You mentioned it earlier, Terry Smith, the defensive player of the year in Broward County. Now, you're talking about some tremendous high school talent in Broward County year after year, and that young man right there was the best of the bunch. Third down, very short yardage needed. They go right up the gut and picking up the first down, Josh Trafton at the 41-yard line. Sadowski is in there defensively. Also in on the tackle is Wayne Blair. Well, that's got to make uh, head coach Jim Sauls happy, Larry, uh, getting his running game out of the chute a little bit in the third quarter. A little success. Maybe they can continue to make that happen. Of course, that Raider defense has been exceptionally tough. You see Aquinas has had the better of it field position-wise to start possessions. Nice job stringing out the play, and then the tackle is made for Aquinas by Derek Irvin. Derek Irvin, one of the few Aquinas players that uh, go both ways. Uh, Leon, I think, had five young men in the starting lineups uh, before kickoff that were going both ways. Irvin, the outstanding wide receiver. That time, he's the outstanding secondary performer. On second and 12, run a little counter action inside. Not much running room for Sylvester Jones. Mike Delicapini in there defensively. And then neither one of these teams is extremely large. Both have pretty good quickness. That's very true. We, we've been uh, so impressed uh, year after year in the state championship battles uh, because of the size of the competitors they just get bigger and bigger year after year but these teams are not overly large in and out of the hands juggled and caught by Smith Smith runs it back to the 40 Terry Smith he's not down still on his feet <laughs> <laughs> finally tackled at the 37 yard line after the ball was tipped the linebacker Terry Smith makes the play for Aquinas and then returns it 18 yards Irvin had the first shot at it well, before the game, when defensive coordinator Mike Spencer told me that this young man, Terry Smith, had seven touchdowns as a defensive player, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I've never heard of such a thing. But you see his innate ability to get the football, and then he just doesn't go down. We've seen him carry the ball on offense. And another great opportunity for Aquinas starting at the 38-yard line. And they get about three yards. Michael Holmes there defensively for Leon, along with Josh Trafton. That strong safety seems to be in on everything. Well, if you keep uh, putting bullets in the other guy's gun, eventually he's going to shoot you, especially when you're at war with each other. And, uh, you know, we saw the block punts uh, earlier, creating problems for the Lions, creating benefits for the Raiders. This time it's a turnover via the interception route that's creating problems for the Lions. Mark the ball just shy of the 35-yard line. Second down and a long seven. Finest sets up with a little wingback formation. They give it to Wilkerson. Nothing there. He'll lose a yard. Mario Miller again there defensively. Well, he's like the uh, point counterpoint to Terry Smith on defense. Mario Miller. You talked about the... Uh, the Big Ben, they call it up there in the panhandle, the Big Ben player of the year on defense. He's a bit larger, 6'1", 215, and he's playing a defensive tackle position. He's down in the interior. On third down, St. Thomas Aquinas needs to get almost to the 27th. Stutz in trouble, gets away from the rush, still on his feet, and he'll be spun to the ground. Frank Pondexter made the tackle, a gain of maybe a yard, but Aquinas again appears to be letting good field position get away from them. Now Keith Wilkerson has slipped out into the flat. Look at the top of the screen right there. He's begging for the ball right now, but Stutz does not have the luxury of flipping it out to him because he's running for his life. 
and that Lion defense did it. They ever do the job right there. After the turnover, they shut the Raiders right down. Not a good kick that time. The last one went out at the one. This one goes out at about the 17 yard line. But Leon will again be pinned pretty deep in their own territory, but not as deep as they once were. Just a 19 yard punt for Aquinas's Barry Cantrell. Let's go down to the field to Art Schifrin. Well, we've seen a bit of an alteration in both teams' kicking games as a result of injuries. For uh, Fort Lauderdale St. Thomas Aquinas, Alex Bader turned his ankle in making a tackle last week, and that uh, you saw that high pooch uh, kickoff just a few minutes ago. He says that the ankle is not bothering him. He did kick off in that manner to, uh, because of the injury, but it's not bothering him, and that he will not be doing that again. Uh, for Leon uh, High School, Greg Madsen uh, was had the squib kicks after hyperextending his uh, his knee on the block punt attempt, and he also has had that little bit of an ulceration uh, due to the injury in this ball game. And we have an incompleted pass on first and 10 for Leon. Good pass rush put on by Jim Palmer, who's played very well. 190 pound defensive end for Aquinas, number 43. Whitfield on second down. Looked to swing it out, couldn't find an open man, and now he will just throw it away. Overthrown, out of bounds, avoided the sack. It's third and 10. Joe McGriff, the alleged intended receiver. But that time it was Wayne Blair with the rush. Well, and the speed. Wayne Blair really sprinting out to, to get into Whitfield's face. Wayne Blair initially lines up as an inside linebacker between the tackles. Once Whitfield dances out uh, from the pocket, uh, Blair just turns on the jets and runs him down. And Whitfield has no chance but to throw the ball uh, deep out along the sideline. So it's third down for Whitfield. The pass is caught at the 26-yard line. Pondexter makes the grab, and it looks like he's got a first down. It's very close. Looks like he's interfered with, too. Billy Gustin, I think... Is going to hit him. Yeah, he hits him before the ball gets there, but Pondexter is not deterred. He makes the catch anyway. That uh, There was no flag, but it looked like there was a, a hit before the ball got there by Gustin. It's going to be closed by a half a football. It is a first down for Leon, a big third and 10 completion. Pondexter runs the, the hook route about uh, 15 yards downfield. Gustin realizes that he's made contact and tries to just kind of uh, walk away, but uh, he didn't expect the catch to be made. You guys are asleep out here. Yeah, <laughs> see. You get five more yards for interference than a 10-yard completion. That's why Jim, Jim Sauls wants it. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Inside handoff. And that's McGriff, and he goes up for about four yards. Sadowski makes the tackle. Brian Sadowski, a 220-pound senior. And those are the kids that these games are so exciting for, the 220-pound defensive tackles whose competitive football careers are ending on this day. For the standout prospects, the Wilkerson's and Porters, they're going to be playing Division I football in the future. Most of these kids will not. Inside run, Matt Gullah along with Jim Palmer make the stop on Sylvester Jones. And it'll bring up third and a couple. Coach Jim Saul seems to be committed to getting that running game going right here. We mentioned that uh, they just had no success at all running the football in the first half. They don't have to run. They, With Whitfield, they're perfectly capable of putting the ball in the air all the time if they want to, but they want, I believe, to get the running game going right here. They're not, uh, they only trail obviously by seven points and a ton of football left to play. They just need to get untracked on offense. On third and short, plenty of running room and a first down for McGriff. He's tackled by Terry Smith along with Gullah. But a first down for Leon as that opened up big time for McGriff. Joe McGriff, number 35, quickly hitting the hole. Mario Miller, the guy that we talked about on defense, now 
playing left guard. On first and ten, Whitfield rolling out to the left, in trouble. Palmer can't grab him. Whitfield in traffic wisely falls. I assume that was on purpose. No, Eight I, of about ten yards. I don't think so. That's what you call faking yourself out. But uh, it's a beautiful job. That's a design play. You see, he, he, he invites them there and then quickly 360s and wheels his way out of the pocket. Raiders chasing him all over the place right there, but it uh, wasn't a Raider that finally did him in. It was his own feet. Less than 30 seconds to go in the third quarter of the Florida Class 4A championship game. 10-3 is our score. Aquinas leading Leon. There's McGriff inside, and he will carry Matt Gulliff for about five yards and a first down. Put a saddle on the 165-pound sophomore. Well, for the first time in this championship ball game, I think the Lions are making a statement right here, Larry. They're saying, as we mentioned, and I believe it's uh, intentional that uh, Coach Jim Sauls has come out and saying, hey, Let's smash mouth a little football here. Let's uh, get rough and tough with these guys. Let's take charge of this game physically. This drive started for Leon back on their own 17 yard line. They are in Aquinas territory trailing by seven as we reach the end of the third quarter. We'll be back with the final 12 minutes of the Florida 4A title game after this time out on Sports Channel. 10-3, but Leon on a good drive, taking over three minutes off the clock. And they have a first down at the 46 as the fourth quarter begins. Pass is caught by Maurice Thomas. Might have been tipped at the line, but it's a gain of eight. Willie Wright uh, in coverage initially. The linebacker right there lets the receiver release from the line of scrimmage and then it's Derek Irvin eventually who has to make the hit but uh, a nice route by Maurice Thomas you saw Jim Palmer number 43 got a big paw on it but the deflection did not keep it from being a completion Sylvester Jones up the middle for a yard and he's going to be just shy of first down yardage outside the 36 Aquinas looking for its first state championship. They were the runner-up last year for Leon, looking for title number three with state championships in 69 and 74. Each team with three timeouts remaining. Remember, we do have a tiebreaker now in the championship games. Last year, we had co-champs in 5A. There's Joe McGriff, still on his feet at the 30. McGriff finally Bulldog down at the 28-yard line by Willie Wright and friends, but he picks up eight yards and another first down for Leon. Well, that play is no different than a football play that was run back in the 1920s and 1930s. It's a quick dive to the back. Uh, nothing special here, is it? Just between the guard and the tackle, hit the hole quickly. Man for man blocking in front. And then, of course, the beautiful effort of the running back uh, added an extra dimension to that play. From the shotgun, Whitfield in and out of the hands of Thomas, zipped it right through Maurice Thomas's hands. Maurice Thomas needed a baseball glove to catch that one. It was hot. Or maybe a fishing net, you know. That ball was really had some steam on it. Jim Sauls wants six out of this drive with 10.23 to go in the game, trailing by a touchdown. When you pass on first down and don't get it done, then you're almost committing yourself to the pass again, which is not how this drive started. Whitfield in and out of the hands of Jones, who was right there. No running room for him as he was about to run into Terry Smith and Matt Gullah, but it's third and 10. Well, they really changed things up, didn't they? Where they were running, smash mouth, running, and all of a sudden they come out and throw, don't, don't get it done, and then what, they're in the shotgun now. And that's not how this drive uh, had success. Third down and 10, Leon has out first downed Aquinas, if that counts for anything, 12-8. Whitfield gets it complete in the flat, the catch is made, and a Willie Hall first down at the 15.
Willie Hall runs a beautiful route on Billy Gustin, the strong safety, a deep hook. Gustin has got it in reverse, and uh, I don't know why, because Willie Hall just hooked up with the yardage he needed on third down to make the first down. Gustin perhaps could have been more aggressive in his coverage right there. But First. he was trying to go deep, protect himself deep. On first down, they swing it out incomplete. Pass was intended for Joe McGriff, but again, throwing it on first down for Leon at the 15-yard line. They can get a first down at the five. 9.51 to go in the 4A title game. Tallahassee Leon trailing St. Thomas Aquinas 10-3. Well, one thing that is different as well here in this drive is Whitfield's having time. He doesn't seem to be under the pressure that he was earlier. Boy, a sack here would really hurt him and would help Aquinas. Okay, they're maximizing their protection right here. Throwing for the corner, batted away, up making the play. Sophomore Billy Brown, number one in the game, and he got a paw on it before it would have dropped in the hands of Maurice Thomas. As he leaped in the air, his legs cramped on him, and that's uh, not unusual in this heat and humidity. Derek Irvin is over there to help. They kept in uh, maximum protection. They tried to streak or fade the receiver, Thomas, down along the sideline. It's a combination of Billy Brown, number one, and Derek Irvin, number 11, doing the job for the Raiders. Brown may be the quarterback next year. He's the backup quarterback. Also a backup in the secondary for Aquinas. 5'11", 170 pounds, sophomore. You see part of the Aquinas band and the Santa girls, I guess. Here you see Derek Irvin cramping up. He needs to get over the sideline and take in some fluids. He's an important part of this Aquinas team. 9.45 to go. Big third and 10 facing Tallahassee Leon. Well, in the last third and 10, they got it done. They had to go to the shotgun. Let's see this uh, obviously tremendously important to keep this drive alive. Uh, trailing by a touchdown in the championship battle here in the 4A division of high school football in the state of Florida. Whitfield does that little roll to the left side. He throws. It's almost intercepted by Gustin, and it goes incomplete, and it's fourth down. Tried to go to Maurice Thomas again. This time, Billy Gustin playing more aggressively. We saw him on the last third down. Remember, he was a little conservative in his coverage. This time, he says, hey, I'm going after the ball. They're not going to pick up a first down. This is a design rollout. Whitfield tries to bait him into the pocket and then quickly get outside. They tried to knock down the end and have no one out there to contain him, but that was all Billy Gustin right there. They will not take the 32-yard field goal try. They go for it on fourth and 10. Still a lot of time to play in this game. Whitfield with the shovel pass. Jones will not get it. Sylvester Jones picks up about four or five yards and that's it. Willie Wright, number seven, the junior linebacker, makes the play defensively. Well, that's a huge gamble on fourth down with uh, at least, what, uh, 12 yards to go or so. There's the shovel to Jones. He's got a lot of real estate to make up to pick up the fourth down. Look at the quickness of Willie Wright there. He comes up to make the hit uh, well short of the first down marker. So uh, what started out so uh, well, the running game, uh, for the Lions had to be abandoned late in that drive and the Raiders rose to the occasion on defense. 18 play drive but it comes away with no points and now Aquinas runs inside. Mario Miller makes the tackle on Wilkerson after he picked up about four. Oh that's so discouraging for a team. 18 plays in the fourth quarter trailing by a touchdown and you do all that work have all that effort and then get nothing to show for it. Just outside the 15-yard line. Now Jim Sauls needs his defense to get that ball back for his offense, which had such a successful drive. From the 17 to the 15, and then they come up short. Stutz in trouble. 
still running and he throws it away over the head of his man Lenny Eterno and out of bounds to avoid the sack. Excellent pressure being put on by Coder Little. Now Sean Stutz got the uh, 4A classification uh, student athlete of the year award prior to the game. I think I heard them say he's got like a 3.8 grade average and all he did there was uh, show us his intelligence. He did not take the sack. He was under pressure and he throws the ball away. So it's a terrific advantage to have a, a bright young man and a talented athlete like that leading your attack. Third down for Aquinas. Run a draw play. Wilkerson trying to get outside. Nothing but red shirts there. Stays oh. in bounds. Has the first down. And is finally run out of bounds at around the 30. Great individual effort. Now certainly the most outstanding uh, running effort of this ball game. Even though Keith Wilkerson had a 24-yard touchdown run, he was untouched on that one. This time he gets mauled from time to time. There's a tackle attempt. Two, three. Four, five, six. Finally, the sixth red jersey knocks him out of bounds. I'm not even sure that guy was in on the field when the play began. <laughs> <laughs> Had to start calling in reinforcements. Big first down for Aquinas at the 30. You saw in the replay, he stepped out around the 21. At least it appeared he did, but that doesn't make any difference. That would have been a first down even had it been called. Inside handoff goes to Porter for a couple. Jamie Thompson makes the tackle for Leon and we will continue to watch the clock as we near the eight minute mark to go in this football game. Aquinas obviously would have to sustain quite a drive to take the rest of this time off, but every minute that goes by is another opportunity that goes by for Tallahassee Leon, which trails by seven. On second and eight. Wilkerson, he's got five. Wilkerson driving toward the 40 yard line and it appears they have spotted him just shy of first down yardage. Pondexter made the tackle, but again, Wilkerson with those driving legs of his won't go down on the first couple of hits. His coach, George Smith, has a pair of runners with Wilkerson and Porter. Let's hear from Coach Smith as he talks about those talented backs and what they mean to this Aquinas attack. These two guys are something special. I mean, they they block, they they catch, uh, they block for each other. Uh, they're they'll be very much missed, and they're they're really uh, two guys that uh, are really characters to be around. They're a lot of fun. Twenty-seven hundred eighty-four yards and thirty-four touchdowns for the tandem, which is part of the reason why they're fun to be around. I'm sure. Nice hit by Thompson. And that may be shy of first down yardage. A big hole opened up. Jamie Thompson closed it all by himself. Yeah, Jamie Thompson said they're fun to be around too. And he's, he's around him right here. Is that uh, Porter that he hits? Jamie Thompson, number 22, with a perfect, a picture perfect head on tackle right there. Nice. But the Raiders are doing the job though, eating up this clock, uh, moving the chains. 6.30 left in this championship battle. They got a good spot there across the nose of the ball, across the 40, right where Wilkerson was hit. And so it's first and 10. And they'll keep it on the ground. And Wilkerson gets a couple at the most. Raven Talbot, Desmond Henderson there defensively. Where Aquinas has played hard on every play of this game as a Aquinas blocker, Hambright shaken up. This time it's Porter. You talked about that uh, dynamic duo in the backfield. Both those guys, uh, Porter and Wilkerson, with over 1,000 yards rushing. Wilkerson with over 1,500 yards rushing. So they really uh, let both of those guys uh, carry the ball. Both of them uh, so talented. This traditionally is a tailback oriented offense, but because Porter is also so talented, they let him carry the ball from the fullback position a lot. Nothing there that time. Coder Little shot in to make the hit on Porter, and it'll be third down and a long nine to go for Aquinas with 5.15 left in the game. Little, the inside linebacker, 
shoots in to make a big hit on Porter. You, you just see some uh, great fundamental football out here played by these young men, and that's a, a tribute to the coaching staffs. They get these guys uh, not only ready to play in terms of the X's and O's, but they, they teach them the, the fundamentals of the game, and it's clearly seen on those last two head-on tackles. Only five seconds on the play clock for Aquinas. They did get it off in time. They'll run a reverse. There's Brown. Brown to the 45, still on his feet. Brown to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown. Billy Brown, the sophomore, who saved the touchdown with the play in the secondary on the last Leon offensive possession, comes back with the 59-yard touchdown run for Aquinas. Well, those looks like, like some fresh legs right there, didn't they, on that reverse? Third and long, the Raiders are forced to go with uh, either the pass or a bit of trickery. They decide on the trickery, and Billy Brown, once he saw the gaping hole on the reverse, turned on the Jets, and he was uncatchable. It appeared somebody might have caught him around the 20-yard line. Yeah, that was Willie Hall, number 21, tried to make the diving tackle, but as he made the dive, Billy Brown just ran away from him. Here's the reverse. Now, this is designed to go outside. He says, I can't get outside. He makes the quick cut upfield, and look at the speed right there. A broken tackle. Here you see the attempt by Willie Hall. It's going to come about right here. And he just can't get it done. But Brett Shively, Coder Little, Raven Talbot all had shots at Brown, and he just ran by him. And I think, Jim, you're absolutely right. Those fresh legs, Billy Brown hasn't played a lot. He closed on that pass and for the corner of the end zone to bat it away. And there he was obviously the quickest man on the field. Well, this has been a very even football game. Both uh, teams evenly matched. Leon had a great chance on their 18-play drive prior to this drive of the Raiders, but Leon got nothing done. The Raiders came up with a big play on third down. Nine plays, 89 yards, eight up over five minutes on the clock, and we're looking at 431 left in this championship battle, and the Fort Lauderdale St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders are leading by 17 to three. So Aquinas will kick it off. Let's see what kind of kick they go with this time. In fact, it's not Bader who's going to kick it off. It's Gustin, and he kicks a wobbler. Someone better field it. Oh, what a hit, and Aquinas recovered. A tremendous hit, knocked the ball loose, and Aquinas gets it back with 4.29 to go. One of the hardest hits you'll see in any level of football is coming up right now. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's number eight. Roger Harriet, a backup running back. Oh, you're talking about fresh legs. Those were some more right there, Roger Harriet. <laughs> fresh forearms too. Uh, he was a, uh, he, he looked like a cannon shot right there, knocking the, no one carrying that football at any level could have possibly held on to it after getting hit like that. Now Aquinas up two touchdowns with the ball as we near the four minute mark to go in this 4A title game. And you know they will put it on the ground. Here's Wilkerson to the outside. Runs over a tackler. Wilkerson scores the touchdown. And Aquinas has put this game pretty much out of reach. Twenty nine yards for Keith Wilkerson. Keith Wilkerson gets outside easily. There's Porter making the great block. Now Willie Hall has a chance in the secondary, puts his head down, but can't wrap up the powerful Daryl Porter, or excuse me, Keith Wilkerson. Porter made the block. And as you mentioned, this game has been blown wide open. 92 yards, two touchdowns on the day for Mr. Wilkerson. The extra point is good. Bader still kicking those. And with three minutes and 58 seconds left to go in the Florida Class 4A High School Football Championship game, St. Thomas Aquinas with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns separated only by a kickoff and a fumble 
has taken a commanding 24 to three advantage in this ball game. Well, we're talking about a Raider team that uh, was in the finals last year, did not get it done, but they certainly have it done this afternoon. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the Florida High School Activities Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited, along with Art Schifrin and Jim Yarbrough. Larry Vitell with you at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville, where St. Thomas Aquinas High School, a school that has made it to the playoffs on... 11 occasions, but only twice to the championship game. Last year, the runner-up to Fort Walton Beach looking for their first ever state title, and they are three minutes and 58 seconds away from it. Did want to mention the guy who recovered that fumble was a kid named Charles Newton, who's not on our roster on that kickoff, recovering it for Aquinas. Sylvester Jones nowhere to go on the kick return. He's dropped at the 17. I think if you talk to court coach uh, George Smith, uh, Larry, he would tell you that he expected his team last year to be state champions. And they were very disappointed when they came up here and didn't get it done against Fort Walton Beach. But uh, after losing those 11 scholarship players that went on to play Division I, uh, you wouldn't have thought they'd have the chance to come back. But he said it was that close to us and cohesiveness of the unit and uh, it's really uh, paying big dividends here in this championship battle in 92. And that has to be tremendously satisfying for George Smith and his staff. Whitfield on the run gets to the outside is run out of bounds at the 29 yard line. So he picked up a dozen and a first down. I think they might have uh, felt like last year once they got to the championship battle uh, it was going to be uh, a done deal with that talented team that they had and then they were shocked you know not to win that championship game and again with the uh, common purpose and the focus that they had this year they they came back with a vengeance and have broken up this very close game here in the fourth quarter 332 to go a 21 point lead for Aquinas Whitfield Catch is made at the 40-yard line by Willie Hall. He did not get out of bounds. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. And Leon has to hope to score quickly and force a couple of uh, recovered onside kicks. Very difficult to try to do that. Well, they have come from behind, but this would be a almost an impossible task. And, and they come from behind because they can throw. They have to throw right now, but the clock is not on their side. Only 316 and ticking down on the clock. Whitfield throws it deep down the left sideline. Derek Irvin is there along with Maurice Thomas. Neither one comes away with its second down. Flag on the play. It's against Aquinas. Back around the 32 yard line. I don't know. Maybe they roughed the passer. Well, I was watching downfield as the bomb was thrown and I didn't see the the hit in the backfield. Let's see what the uh, referee is going to tell us here. It's a 15-yarder. We'll put the ball at the Aquinas 45 with 3.03 left in the game. A personal foul. Defense. Roughing the passer. Automatic first down. So Justin Whitfield, who's been knocked around all day long, finally has takes one shot that gets his team 15 yards. And Aquinas calls timeout. I think George Smith wants to get his players' minds on this possession, perhaps, and away from the state title celebration. Yeah, they might be having the tendency to celebrate a little prematurely, as you see defensive coordinator Mike Spencer in there encouraging the guys to shut them down. Let's get this thing over with. Let's get our offense back on the field, and we'll celebrate on the sideline. Sports Channel brings you the best in college basketball with the Florida Gators, South Florida Bulls, JU Dolphins, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, plus exciting conference action from around the nation. Be sure to check your local listings for dates, times, and matchups in your area. 3.03 to go in the 4A championship game. Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas leading by a score of 24-3. 
Leon scored first in this game. Aquinas added a touchdown, and it was a 7-3 ball game. Then in the third quarter, an Aquinas field goal made it 10-3. But here in the fourth quarter, two long touchdown runs, one by Billy Brown, the other by Keith Wilkerson, has taken this game from a seven-point game to a 21-point Aquinas lead. Pass intended for McGriff, and he gets popped by Derek Irvin. Irvin in very aggressive coverage over there, as he should be. And it'll be second down and 10. Tallahassee Leon opened the season with a loss to Jacksonville Bowles. After four wins, they were beaten by Swanee County High School from Live Oak. But in the playoffs, they have been the come from behind specialists. I don't know that they can pull this one off, however. Whitfield with just a three-man rush, almost intercepted. Derek Irvin had his eyes on the end zone instead of the football. Absolutely so. We talked about him being a bit of uh, more aggressive in the secondary, which is easy to do when your team has such a significant 21-point uh, lead. This is his all the way, but uh, he just did not make the grab. Can't believe he let it get by him. Maurice Thomas, of course, they were trying to get the ball to their most talented receiver. Now on third down, Whitfield for Thomas, makes the catch, still on his feet at the 25, and he's dropped at the 24-yard line. But Maurice Thomas, who's had a good game today, makes another catch for Tallahassee Leon. On the day, Thomas now with five grabs for 76 yards. Billy Gustin, the strong safety, I think was trying not to interfere. As you, as you see Irvin playing zone right there, Gustin breaking on the ball, but uh, forgot that uh, Thomas was so talented he could sneak in front of him and make the catch. Again for Thomas at the 10, and he's down to the seven yard line. Willie Wright there defensively along with Gustin. But Leon keeps moving the chains and they have first and goal. Well, fortunately for the Lions, uh, they have this passing potential or they would be out of it uh, with no doubt. But uh, if they can get in right here with a little over two minutes to go, uh, things change a little bit. Aquinas uses its second timeout. And they will gather the troops over on the sideline with 2.14 on the clock, 24 to three. We saw that onside uh, kick work on a couple of occasions and a couple of other uh, championship uh, battles that we've uh, witnessed on Sports Channel here in the state of Florida over the past couple of weekends. So if they got in right now, it's... Uh... Of course, Jesuit in our 3A game got an onside kick, recovered it, but didn't get the... Didn't get the guys in the striped shirt to see it their way. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't get the ball, but they did execute it beautifully. Our 1A champion this year, Jacksonville University Christian, the 2A title to Frostproof, and the 3A championship to Dade City Pasco. St. Thomas Aquinas from Fort Lauderdale, trying to be the first true South Florida team to come away with a title. There you see the numbers on Whitfield. On the year, Whitfield has averaged about 18 attempts a ball game and the 31 indicative that they haven't been able to get Sylvester Jones running. Jones almost 100 yards a game on the season, but today Sylvester Jones has gained only 14. Whitfield pumps and down he goes. Brian Sadowski got in a lot more quickly than Leon had hoped and he drops him at the 11-yard line and Leon will use a timeout. It looked like Sadowski was unblocked. Look to the top of your screen for number 56, the defensive end. Yeah, the tackle blocks down. That seemed to be a mistake right there, a mental mistake. And of course, Sadowski says, thank you very much. And I'm gonna get me a sack. Well, Aquinas has been all over Whitfield today. Sacking him left and right is total for the day now. Puts him at minus 16 yards, but I think he has 
closer to 60 yards in sacks on six quarterback sacks today. And remember, four of them coming early. Ball is at the 11 where it is second down and goal. 2.05 to go. Tallahassee Leon trying to get their first touchdown of the game, trailing Aquinas 24 to 3. We've got the 5A championship game coming up. Bradenton Manatee against Fort Lauderdale Dillard as Dillard will try to bring home a second to Broward County. Inside McGriff, he's got five, he's got eight, he's got nine yards as the sophomore rambles down to the two. Almost got the touchdown, didn't he, as that hole opened up quickly. And it'll be third and goal. Now the clock really, uh, it's 144, it's a mood issue right now, but it's a, a bit of pride for Leon to get in, oh, there's an exchange problem right there, breakdown on the play. And with the busted play, Leon will call their final timeout, facing a fourth and goal from the two. That's about the fourth time that's happened to Leon today where Whitfield has turned to give the ball to someone who wasn't there. Well, we talked about the multi-dimensional aspects of this offense, and uh, sometimes uh, another way of saying that is that it's complicated. <laughs> and uh, sometimes a kid will just uh, forget that he's supposed to be uh, on the left of the quarterback rather than the right, and you'll see a misfire like that. But Florida the, High School Activities Association state championships here in Gainesville. Yeah, what a great job they do with uh, all the state championship programs that they uh, sponsor for not only the young men, but for the young ladies in this state. A lot of talented athletes and many sports in the uh, high school programs around this uh, Sunshine State. There you see Brandon Hambright. He's a senior offensive tackle. That's what you call personalized attention, isn't it? Hey, Not only is he getting an ice pack, but it's a beautiful young lady that's uh, applying the ice pack. If he'd have known that's how shoulders were <laughs> rehabbed, he'd have hurt that thing weeks ago. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Fourth and goal, Leon looking for the end zone. They finally find it. Sylvester Jones from two yards out gets Tallahassee Lee on their first touchdown of the game. Well, we talked about the great success that Jones had had all year long, and finally he gets a bit of a reward for all his efforts all year, gets into the end zone in the championship battle. A bit of uh, pride uh, comes back to that uh, sideline for Leon now that they've been able to get on the board here in the second half with the touchdown. They had the field goal. And a flag on the play. A little movement for Leon, so it will be an extra five yards on this upcoming extra point. 1.29 to go in the game. Leon now with just one timeout remaining. They used two of them on that drive. Offense, replay the down. That is the first penalty against Leon in this game. Wow, that's hard to believe. They'll go for two. Whitfield rolling left, trying to run for it, and he will not. Derek Irvin makes the tackle at around the five-yard line, so the conversion is no good. The lead for Aquinas is 15, and we get set for a Tallahassee Leon onside kick attempt. It'll be a desperation effort, obviously, to follow if they do get the football. Not the kind of situation you want to be in in the late moments of the championship battle, trailing by such a margin. Nice drive for Leon, 83 yards, took 229. And they finally got into the end zone. Well, that last part you said, they've, they've had nice drives before. They just didn't get the last part of your sentence, getting into the end zone. They've had some excellent drives. They just were not able to finish them off. And then they get one finished, and it's really uh, too late. We're talking about the other Florida high school championships. Sports Channel will be in Tallahassee in March for the boys and girls high school basketball tournaments. Be sure to check your listings in March to find out 
when and where we'll be showing those games in your area. Aquinas up close, but they don't have their hands team in there. They got all the linemen. <laughs> well, one guy with hands was there, and he made the catch. Wait a minute. I resemble that remark. <laughs> Terry Smith, who else? Surrounded by all those offensive linemen, and there's Terry Smith. Watch Joe Quinn, number 61. Watch Joe's hands here. <laughs> <laughs> Joe kept the tradition of offensive linemen alive. He was looking for a guy to block. <laughs> That's all right, Joe. Joe's going to have a state championship ring. It's just a matter of practice. You know, you got to get repetitions, and Joe hasn't had that many repetitions of having linemen are over there hitting each other. They don't get a chance to work with the ball that often. So anyway, all they have to do is kneel down on it. There's Terry Smith running the option. The senior's still on his feet. He's got a first down to the 40-yard line, so they let the little guy. About 5'8", maybe, 190-pounder, tough as nails. The Broward County Player of the Year, and he gets to run the option. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> well, we talked about repetitions. He almost eats Porter's shoulder pads there. Then he almost gets knocked down by a couple of hits. They can't bring the kid down. They're going to have to take him out or he's going to score. I'm talking about the coach is going to have to take him out or he's going to score. And now they'll nail down. They let him run one play, but it appears now they've got the kneel down and call it a day formation. And that's exactly what Aquinas does. And unless Leon uses its final timeout, the Florida Class 4A High School Football Championship game is over. And Leon is not calling time. So St. Thomas Aquinas with their second trip in as many years to the state championship game. Last year they were beaten by Fort Walton Beach. But this year Aquinas will get the trophy as the Florida Class 4A champion. And George Smith gets the Gatorade bousing. Uh, Jim Saul's addressing his team. Obviously an emotional time for these young kids who had dreams of a state championship but a tremendous accomplishment to get to this point. I'm sure it'll be a while before they feel that way, but they really gave it a great effort and played with a very fine St. Thomas Aquinas team right up until the fourth quarter. Well, certainly it was just the big plays, you know, the reverse and then the long run by uh, Keith Wilkerson. Just two big plays really in the fourth quarter was the difference. And uh, Leon has a lot to be proud of. And uh, of course these Raiders, as we mentioned, were here before. Jim Sauls, the head coach at Tallahassee Leon, is on the field with Art Schifrin. Coach, uh, looked like you had a chance there in the second half of the ball game there. It seemed a bit that the big drive was uh, when you got the ball knocked away in the end zone, came away with no points. Was that what it looked like to you? Yes, it was. We knew we had to come out with something there, and uh, we just made too many mistakes. We made critical mistakes in the first half, but we were still in it. <clears throat> we came back, and we just we never recovered from that. We moved the ball, but we were sporadic. Defensively, we played great all day, I thought, and we just left our defense on the field too long, and they have a heck of an offense. You ended up going for a, a shovel pass on fourth down there instead of trying the field goal. Were you uh, concerned about the knee on your, on your punter, on your kicker? Well, no, I wasn't concerned about the knee. We were over on the hash mark. We're probably thinking back, probably should have run it in the middle and come out of there with something anyway, but uh, we chose to go ahead and try to get six on the board. All right, well, thanks a lot, Coach. A great season, although it's a little bit tough luck today. Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Art. 24-9 to 9 is the final. We hope you enjoyed Sports Channel's coverage of the Florida Class 4A High School Football Championship game. We thank you for joining us. I'm Larry Vitell saying so long for Art Schifrin, Jim Yarbrough, and our entire Sports Channel crew. Again, the final score, Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas 24, Tallahassee Leon 9. Congratulations to the state champion Raiders.